Ah, we're live. Testing. You went one, two, and three. You're missing. Panic. You went one, two, and three. You're missing. I meant to say. Panic. Like again, if I was going to be uh, want to be greedy and make a fortune, I would run a consulting firm uh, for Fukushima because it's a hot topic now. And then it's a thousand bucks to sit there with me, and I'd just go run, run. I'd do that for a whole hour if they were still there. And if not, I'd go out and take the money when you ran away and go down and buy bananas and start my own nuclear reactor. That's what I'd do. Get a big barn and fill it up with bananas. After a couple of weeks, I'd have it stuffed with bananas. And I could sell the money I'm making from the power, from the banana nuclear power plant. I know you're probably laughing at me now. That's not fair. You never heard me out yet. It's a brilliant plan, really. I stole it off all the PR, nuclear PR people out there. So I didn't really come up with it on my own, but I think I could make a fortune. And if everybody would invest, say, uh, $35 billion with me, I could probably get one up and running right around the time the Pacific Ocean was finally dead. Well, that's actually not true. And that's why we're here tonight, because bananas, um, you got to stop eating them. They're giving you the cancers. I figured this all out. I listened to all the PR people out there, and they said, they always say, you know, Fukushima's going to be like the background radiation of a banana. That means a banana is one of the most frightening things on this planet. And we should go out and eradicate all the bananas on this planet before they do us in. I'm serious. This is a serious issue. I mean, think about this. They're everywhere. And they're yellow. It's hard to resist. But... Today, I wouldn't go over there because I asked a guy at the supermarket if they had a Geiger counter so I can check those bananas make sure they didn't, they weren't too hot. And he said, are you okay, sir? And I said, hey, this is not a joke. This is serious stuff, man. After all kinds of investigating, I finally come to the conclusions. Yes, indeed, the bananas. Yeah, I know they look innocent and everything, but they're at most toxic thing on this friggin' planet. Besides Hanfield and Sellafield, England, Hanford, Sellafield, which is two different places down the road from me in British Columbia in America. There's a place known as Hanford, 450 billion gallons dumped into the soil of yellow cake and 41 miles of open trench. But not three melted reactors. Not three melted reactors where we're going through a nuclear fission. There is some fission going on down there, you can be sure. They're expecting that place to blow up in the near future. It's a well thought out plan. We're going to put it all in a sarcophagus for millions of years. Now give us our license. Hey, George, did you get a, that deal on eBay of 45 gallon drums? We got a whole bunch of yellow cake I got to get rid of. We'll probably get you 10 bucks a drum. And don't buy any drums off eBay, by the way, because that's what you're probably buying. I put a balloon on the nipple head there, but I just want to break it. I'm not finished the other robot. Uh, robot. I'm not finished the other guy yet, so I just stuck a balloon on his head. I got his lower body and his feet done. I don't know if you can see them. We're going to pop his head later on. This is uh, going to be banana head. And uh, just a quick update on this. You can see I put dowels. I don't know if you can see it, but... All the cardboard is held together with dowels. So every joint here, there's dowels. Everything's got dowels to hold it in a little place, little cardboard dowels. So he's going to be pretty big. He's another prototype. We're going to pop his head tonight. And uh, this is the banana. I'm going to put fabric on it. And he'll work something like that, right? Bananas! Yeah! Bananas! Ah! But he's supposed to look like a banana, right? So I don't know if you can see it from there, but he should be pretty cool. And so that's just a mock-up, basically. And I'll put fabric in here, and then the fabric, like a blanket, that will run down there. And he's going to sit on the head of that other guy. When he puts the body and the arms on the moral, he'll look more like a, like a tip coat. Just because I get kind of... I get, I'm starting to get lonely whenever I see Tepco, I want something I can smack. 
smash. Give me something I can stab him later. <coughs> stab and Tepco in the head. Now, Tepco's a couple hundred thousand people, so I'm not trying to stab them all in the head. I'm not saying that. I'm just... This, that's the name of my puppet, is Tepco. It's got nothing to do with the nuclear power plant. Hmm. Nothing to do with it. <laughs> not inspired by a madman. Sorry about that, folks. I'll get that out of the way, because... I won't stop goofing around once I get started. But that was my first prototype. Hi, folks. How's everybody? I'm radiation dickhead. Excuse the language. Meanwhile, what about everybody raising money? Hi, everybody. Missing Sky. Yeah, dry cash for bananas. That's a start. Until we can figure out, maybe we can put it in the bananas in the sarcophagus for a couple of million years. And future generations, if they come back to Earth, can't figure out how to get rid of the bananas, that toxic waste. And think about all the cancers we're going to save. This is, I think this is a crusade that we are meant for. We were made for this, to eradicate the bananas on the planet. That is something we could do. That is something, a legacy we could leave for the world. And I think, you know, why leave it for the next generation to eradicate the bananas? Because of the radiation, they're going to kill everything on the planet. But, there's a little problem there. Potatoes do it too. Son of a god, yeah, no. And rocks. So we gotta get rid of all the rocks, all the potatoes, all the bananas on the friggin' planet. Because all the PR firms are saying that, you know, the bananas, are, you know, the radiation, the background radiation of the bananas is ultimately what does all the damage. And he also said, uh, which I found funny, I was <laughs> yesterday, that... Hanford, they would break America. It would go bankrupt. You would have to uh, raise all the kids up to be nuclear toxic experts for hundreds of years in order to try to even conceive of it. But you would actually break America. It would cost about a trillion dollars to even try to clean it up. Now Fukushima makes Hanford look like a joke, like a banana, literally. Fukushima is gone gone rogue on this planet and so what we got to do is organize how we're going to get rid I'll take all the bananas down there and plug up Fukushima I don't know 100% and I'll move on to conversation here in a second I can only keep that going for so long I miss Milk in the Cloud broken ass on there you're a radiation dickhead <laughs> I'll come up with a better name than that hi Annabeck. hi John Kirk Yeah, I agree with Kevin Blanche. Is it safe to paddleboard in British Columbia? Is it worth it to find out? No. No, it's not safe. There were 10 buckyballs a day back in April, but now we find out there was 1,500 down in California per cubic meter of year. And one buckyball, one single buckyball, will definitely uh, drain your bank account in a few years because it's a hot particle. If you plant a banana, will you grow a banana tree? I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you. <laughs> Penny says, uh, got a green thumb. <laughs> we heard a little engine that could. I got some funny stuff there last night, night before, night before too. And again tonight, everybody's got a humor. Good good stuff. Bananas and Benjam Benjamins? Benjamins? Hi, Baz. Checks and balance, David. Fifty times, fifty times higher than a banana or radiation. Well, no, you know it's got forty-one miles of open pit of yellow cake, uh, yellow cake, americium, plutonium, strontium, cesium. Forty-one miles of open pit of yellow cake contaminated with. Just the gallows laugh again, because it's so hideous. It's so wrong. It's so wrong. It's so far outside their licensing agreement, the regulatory agency's licensing agreement was they're going to put it on a sarcophagus. What are they going to do? Go in and say, no, nah, we're going to close you down? That means they're going to have to deal with 41 miles of open radiated pits. And they're not going to get their weekly bonuses <laughs> anymore. Right? It's rotten to the core. It, they're rotten to the core. And I have watched so many lectures on low-level radiation from all the best people on the planet, and they're all talking about bananas. 
for like a half an hour. Bananas and rocks. You're living in it all the time when you walk down the road. It's so easy to swear because I'm so angry, but I'm not. And that's so wrong. That's a betrayal of their education. They should have their licensing pulled from them. They should have their degrees yanked from them. People should be writing letters to the college and demanding that be taken away from them. They shouldn't have to. The college should take the license away from these people for using the words banana as a background radiation as an example with uranium-234. You know, uranium-234, ask them what would he drink? What would he rather eat? You know, a bowl of uranium-234 or a bowl of bananas and ask them why. And then ask them why they quote the words banana and rocks and potatoes and walking in the sunshine with the same kind of isotopes that'll murder you. The same kind of isotopes where in Chernobyl they ran it on the roof and they're only allowed there for 15 or 20 seconds and then they went home. Where Chernobyl they went through a million people. But 15 or 20 seconds because it's like the background radiation of a... I was going to say rabbit that time. I don't know where that came from. Of a banana. Or a rabbit. <laughs> I don't care. I got, I, I got in tonight. Hi, James Wan. Can you start over? Yeah, I'll, okay. Hang on. I'll get going. I'll get going. My banana. Oh, it's my louse. Can't see it, I guess. But that'll all be covered in white. And so the cloth will hang over that. That's what I'm hoping it'll work anyway for radiation dickhead over there that I built. Right? Yeah. Radiation. <laughs> so I gotta get used to rolling over but there'll be yellow going over like a big banana I was about to put him on my arm and give him a couple of shots in the head there's dickhead though radiation dickhead here radiation there we go hi Donna Bill banana rads may cause Zoe, uh, zombie syndrome Ooh. Two heads, much radiation. Okay, I'll give it up later. I'll give it up later. <clears throat> when it pops his head. Looks like the pressure is on Tevco. <clears throat> Tevco. <clears throat> Tevco's head. Kill by a banana. I'm gonna say hi to a few people. Hi people. Read some comments. Go a little light here tonight. I got some funny stuff going on in the comments section. One of these nights I'm going to sit here and do nothing but just watch the comment section. I'm just going to play a recording in the background. And I'll put one of the dummies here in the chair and I'll sit there and watch the comments. Actually, we got the comments being saved and put up on uh, Steve's doing it, isn't it? I think. Hang on. Hi, Starlight. Yeah, if we die, it'll be because of the bananas. As any PR or any pundit or any media expert, and they'll tell you, the bananas are going to get you. The background radiation of the banana is going to kill you. See, they shouldn't have their licenses for other... Talking about banana. I know I can't give it up. I'll get on it. There, I put him over there. I'll pop his head too in a little bit, just for something to do. But we'll save the big one for the end, yeah? I'm going to chew it off. Slow. Um, yeah, I know I'm clowning around tonight. Because that's what 2004 is all about. It's about getting serious and clowning around. And it's also about repeating a few things all the time now. Um, how we need bloggers. I'm going to have to do a video and Fukushima bloggers want it. Or, um, let me see. Do a video. Uh, E&E &E News should make us their poster child. Because we're their bastard childs, uh, children anyway, aren't we? We're all the E&E &E News little bastard children. They're all over there all the time. Look what's mommy and daddy got for us today, I wonder. <laughs> oh, I need my fix. Ha ha. Banana taunting. I was going to bring bananas home today, but, you know, I'm worried about the background radiation. And I'm going to have to complain to the supermarket. I'm not going to be able to shop there anymore if they're going to continue to have these friggers in there. Because... They stare at you when you go, boy, you notice that? How the banana's always staring at you? That's a fact. You can feel it. Like when you're getting your potatoes, that the bananas is watching the back of your head. Don't. 
You don't tell me you didn't feel that the last time you were in the supermarket, like the bananas were like intently trying to drive their beady little eyes into you. Because that's a fact. Why well, they got a banana tant? <laughs> hey Jester, pick them out. Anybody's watching this video now don't know what's going on. It's like, pff, they're all gone mad over there. There's nothing sensible going on there. They just went on for how long? 15 minutes. I bet bananas. Well, I've seen them, the experts do it for a whole half an hour, time after time. Banana like a banana, like a banana, like a banana, <laughs> like a friggin' banana, right? So it's like a banana, see? Right? And then everybody goes, yeah, woo! I don't know why people don't like nuclear power. It's like bananas. You don't like bananas? You don't like rocks? Wow, wow. And so they justify, they really, truly have over and over, there's not one of them out there don't do it. They all do it. And they do it in all the institutions, at all the lectures, at all the... All the, the, the well-meaning people who invite them in, they do it to them. They stab them. They're stabbing them. Like, I'm going to stab one of these heads here tonight. What I mean? Uh, um, Paw Patrol. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh oh, I got his foot. Now, come over here once, you buddy. Get up, hammer away at it. Uh, 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 How do I... Uh, <laughs> How do you like that pinhead? I'll get back to you in a little bit. You sit right there and I'll finish with you. Yes, yeah, so I kind of blew it tonight. I know. What are you going to do, man? Sue me. We got three melter reactors. We got 60 days or so punched in doing serious shows every night and just tonight I had to come out and just pfft, wig out. It's probably not going to be a very long show. That was another question I wanted to ask everybody. Should I do these shows for 30 minutes instead of an hour or an hour and 10 that I usually do? It's so hard to cover anything in 30 minutes because I goof around sometimes. And sometimes, you know, like I spend a lot of time trying to say hi to everybody, but sometimes the things are moving so quick you can't read the comments. All hail Tepco. <laughs> All hail Tepco. I like it. Well, bring me to your litas. That's what the future generation will come down. Tepco will be running the whole planet. Well, I mean, he should be in jail because they used to have, corporations used to have charters. And what a charter... If they broke their charter and say kill the Pacific Ocean or something, well, you can put them all in jail, and you can cannibalize their assets, and use that money for restitution and to pay any outstanding debts. Uh, but you can make them work in jail too, while they're there to pay outstanding debts, and uh, that was known as a charter, and that got obfuscated by corporate personhood, and corporate personhood is a fabrication of an amendment. That was meant to free slaves from a oppress, uh, tyrannical government, and is now uh, they got a, an amendment under that law that gave the slaves human rights, basically, I guess. And then that law was used to give corporations in increments over decades by corporate lawyers. Corporations ended up with some of the the fourth and the fifth and the sixteenth uh, amendments, twelfth amendment. Laws, protection of laws, protection of search, illegal searches and stuff like that. Now this is a corporation and the idea of surprise inspections was you can catch a dirty cor corporation with his pants down, so to speak, and you could find them. And they weren't supposed to be taxing you, they only supposed to, like under the laws, the Bill of Rights and the Magna Carters and the Constitution, American Constitution, they're not supposed to tax people, they're supposed to tax only corporations. And when you see a sign that says no parking, those signs were only supposed to be put there for corporations' vehicles, so they wouldn't obstruct your ability on your day off to go somewhere and enjoy the scenery or the side of the road, right? All land was your access, except for pub private properties. And then you were only supposed to tax corporations. That way the government wouldn't get very big, and dirty corporations could be put out of business and sent to jail if they were criminal, if they caused harm. And so they, they turned around with this law and then they brought in uh, stuff like workers' compensation where you can't even sue the employer. So total protection. 
And so there's no incentive for them to be honest. There's no incentive for them to play fear. There's no incentive for them not to poison you. And there's no accountability. Like, so if Google goes out and steals everyone's personal information and there is a trial, all he could get is a big fine at best. No one gets to a criminal record. No one goes to jail. But if you get caught spitting on the sidewalk or crossing the road, they might gun you down or beat you within an inch of your life. And so the system is screwed up because it's forced to attack you because it can't touch a corporation because it has human rights <laughs> and it knows how to use them. You don't. And you have to pay to play. And that's a lot of money. In order to play who's, who had the right away here could cost you a couple of hundred thousand. Particularly if you're going up against a corporation. And they got their money in offshore bank accounts because they don't pay taxes no more. And so your biggest obstacle, and always has been and always will be, is the fact that corporations have an illegal, unconstitutional amendment to um, human rights, which is just piggybacked off an amendment to give slaves uh, the freedom from an oppressive government. And so that's our biggest issue. And because... A democracy or a democratic country, and you get to be one of them after the Americans come in. After the Americans go in and shoot you up, then you be, you become a or drop a big bomb on you like Japan, and you become a democratic country. It's pretty cool. Um, and so what happened was Japan all of a sudden these corporations were able to go in there, and that's what TEPCO is. And so TEPCO should, because it's a multinational corporation, it's supposed to have a charter. But because they're part of the democratic country's, uh, you know, good old boys club law, that's all that really is. That law should never be imported into Canada or Japan or any other country. That's the American's law. But this is what giving the law, the, the, you know, how that got, um, slaves got freedoms that got imported in Canada, imported in other countries. And the democratic country. And because Japan is a democratic country... If you went after uh, corporate personhood, because it's absurd, you know, Hugo Black, Justice Hugo Black wrote in 1938 how absurd it was that a law meant to protect the blacks from an oppressive government was being used by corporations to oppress the sovereign people. That's a very powerful statement. And it's a very blunt and a very clear statement. Because it's an illegal amendment, and right away you can hold them to account. But because they got corporate personhood, nobody can touch them. The worst you can do is give them a fine. Nobody's going to go to jail. Dirt, right? So nobody's accountable. What a sweet deal that is. Trade that for a banana any day. But that's your biggest obstacle. That's why Walmart can come into your community and gut your community and mom and pop operations. No one are paying taxes. Well, Walmart puts their money. They don't pay state, federal, or provincial taxes. They put it in offshore bank accounts and use it to pay any fines they get for their hideous practices because nobody goes to jail. So it's a system meant to fail. It's a system meant to destroy and degrade your communities. And because there's no cash flowing in your community, everybody's walking around. And and cause cash, go down to uh, poor countries and, and all the stalls, they don't run on credit cards, right? They don't run on... Uh, you know, plastic cards, some places, sure, I know, they infiltrated it in some places. But those economies are just thriving. There's money going through each other's hands all the time. That's a powerful thing. And so they hire people, they buy things, so that when the big money's coming in, they're big, big ticket items. The money's always moving back and around in that community. But because of this corporate personhood, they structured it, so you can't hold, and there's a point to what I'm telling you. They, they structured it, so you can't hold them accountable. And that's what... TEPCO is used in the, for a get around of everything that's been tried to deal with that. It's the same thing with all nuclear. And on the flip side, if you got rid of corporate personhood, and you can do that, then uh, you get rid of lobbyists by default. Because under charters, lobbying is probably one of the most illegal things out there. And they used to hang them. Yeah. Yeah, that appeals to me. Um, but... That's so important. That truly is the solution. One of the major solutions to dealing with these issues always has been and always will be. And if that had been dealt with, TEPCO could have never 
that those faulty uh, plants would have been recognized through normal inspections but because they got human rights they were able to deny the inspections that's the problem with a de democratic democracy it's meant to supersede your sovereignty take away your Magna Carters, your Bill of Rights and your constitutions and the sovereignty you're a sovereign person you're a free person you truly are a free person even though you were signed into slavery by this hideous machine out there it's all because corporations have human rights that being said I'll jump and drop it but that's so important that people get a handle or start getting a handle on this that if you had a lot of money you can go hire a lawyer right now and go after that and if you were determined you will win because it's an illegal amendment to the Constitution. You have to challenge it. And challenge it you can. And I've seen some of the people that to challenge it and all the other politicians are attacking it and snarly remarks about it. Well, that's because that scares them. Because right? they can be held accountable too now. Because they deal with lobbyists. That's how they make all their money. That's how they pad their bank accounts and their uh, boxes under their beds and in their closets suitcases of money <coughs> excuse me excuse me excuse me that was a little bit loud um, magic mushrooms mushrooms are the first things to absorb cesium 137 but that's code word for uranium 235 and 234 and strontium or say iodine uh, 131 is code word for iodine 129 which doesn't go away for 15 million years because they won't tell you that stuff and all of this stuff will be found in unfortunately mushrooms so if you like doing magic mushrooms you better get your ass in gear that's all I can say and I see uh, sporty diver death rates in 2003 well you can't trust anything like that see unfortunately but I mean you can use it as an implication your ship came in banana boat Banana, banana boat. Banana, banana, banana. Not gonna break a puff balloon like Tepco's hit. Doing that. Ah, yeah, yeah, baby. Oh, 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 oh. yeah. Oh, that was so good. That was so good. I want to do another one so bad. I can't tell you what I was visualizing when I was doing that, but it wasn't. Uh, it's not something you would even put say out loud, let alone put in a book. And you definitely wouldn't say it on the radio because they wouldn't like that very much. Yeah, this will be open season and lobbyists one of these days in the near future. That's there's no doubt. As the population waking up, and it is. This is headed out there. And the narrative is, is getting better all the time for us. We're so lucky. I think we are. I think we should be grateful for that. That all this work we put in in the last 60 odd days, I think has paid off in spades over and over and over. And you've seen the headlines on E&E &E News today. I want to have E&E &E News baby, I know, because they're so, they're so good, man. They're so good. Hi. Great beat, 1961. I just want to run over to that for folks. I know I'm being a dummy tonight, but I can't help it. Sorry. I'm just in one of those moods because it's 2014. And I just want to have more energy and more upbeat, even if I am a little bit goofy. I'm generally pretty good. But, you know, once again, you got to get back. And I'll come over to the e, e News here and say, but you got to get back to the fact that 4,800 peer review academic studies published every day, not counting what's not published, but published every day is 4,800, three a minute, thousand pages at least, if not thousands of pages. Let that digest that for a second. And, and that's every day, 365 days a year, and that's locked away. And you have to pay thousands of dollars just to read one of them mostly, the good ones, tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands, to read what you paid for, what your universities produce, what your children produce. And if you only had one day's worth of that on Fukushima, uh, how many of these issues do you think you can solve? If you had 4,800 peer review studies that got funded tomorrow, and so 4,800 universities on this planet went after it, and then they got peer reviewed by other universities, and that's what's published every day, 4,800. Could we solve a lot of these issues? 
Could we solve a lot of these issues? Yes. Could society be a hell of a lot better? Yes. Would your world be uh, incredibly cool? Yes. Would your entire future change in one day if you had access to 4,800, you know, decent peer review studies that weren't done for a handful of corporations, but were done in good and because of good science? Because you got to realize the universities, they only get to do whatever corporations decide is okay. What will benefit them? Because it's going to get locked away. You're never going to get to read it. But if you had 4,800 peer review studies done on how to solve issues with Fukushima and say you had a thousand on that, a thousand uh, peer review studies all of a sudden on the ocean, you had a thousand peer, peer review studies on human health and you had a thousand peer review studies on putting nutrition in the GMO because that would solve a whole lot of problems instead of taking it all out and nutritionally murdering everybody on the planet and making them more susceptible to all the pathogens and all the diseases that are just an amalgamation of not having no nutrition in your body and being exposed to 65,000 toxic chemicals that the EPA grandfathered in in 1981 with no environmental human impact studies when they hung a shingle on their door. I know that's a bit of a mouthful. But you're vulnerable to all of that stuff because it has no human or environmental impact studies on it. Just the regular stuff in your fridge, the regular stuff in your bathroom, the regular stuff you wash and wear in your clothing, the stuff you sleep in, the stuff you dress your loved ones and your children in, the shoes, the socks, the gloves, the sunglasses, the sun lotion, all of it uh, has the, a higher probability of hurting you than the opposite. And that's shocking. And that's because of a just total disregard and disrespect that our system, our governments, our employees, who some of them are our loved ones, and that are so compartmentalized can never see that. And remember, there's only 2 million people online. 5 million, or 2 billion people online. 5 billion have no concept of reality, have no concept of Fukushima, has no concept the Philippines was annihilated, that 7,000 islands in an archipelago were, were literally bulldozed down by a sustained F4 tornado for four hours when a tornado should only last over your head about a minute at most and that would wreck everything around you when it went past you. At best, a huge massive one would be a quarter mile wide. The Philippines was over 100 miles wide. It took out 44 provinces with sustained winds for four hours of 195 they claim, but they don't know. Nobody, you know, anything that was dear this is just monitoring. It, it was gusting to 235 miles an hour, sustained all the way through those provinces with gust of uh, 200 miles an hour, but sustaining 235 gust here, 235 gust here, 235 gust here, the whole way through. It never lost no speed. Uh, typhoons always lose their speed when they hit land, apparently. <laughs> that was like MERS. You see the headline today, Saskatchewan, Canada, the same temperature as Mars, 53 degrees, and everybody's shocked. But nobody bothered to mention that the F4 tornado, they even changed their wiki page to 155 miles an hour. But like the clips I got in my video back there showed you everybody saying 195 miles an hour and sustaining at that. And then the victims who said the year was projectiles. The entire country was full of air that was full of projectiles. The entire country was one big tornado. Because it picked up all that radiation, all those isotopes. So the urgency is very, very real. And so we got to come out swinging with the concepts that we can take. The, and I'll be doing videos about that, uh, probably more later than night after, about using your voice for a 10, 15, 20 second clip. And to come out, you read those articles long before you get to my video. And so that's your power. You make a 10 or 15 second clip and who cares if nobody watched it? But make no doubt about it that their PR firms, that they're, them themselves, their loved ones, the people that hire them, the people that like them will come and watch the videos. And a lot of these videos will do really good. But it's that overwhelming, because uh, right now they don't get that. They don't get that. And 
people, the most powerful thing on the planet is your voice in a short video. Whether it's just audio with a picture or just you. And you don't have to be angry. You don't have to be indignant. Or you just have to correct what they said that a banana has nothing to do with uranium-234 and uranium-235. Just check it out. And it makes you look silly. So I was just worried. Maybe you shouldn't say that on TV. And just don't have to explain yourself. But you just say something like that. And 10 or 15 second video. And you pop it out with your tags on it. That, by the way, you know, I was just worried because he said the banana was the same as the Fukushima radiation. And Fukushima is strontium, plutonium, uranium, and americanium, and blah. And you could, like, you get a couple hundred or a couple thousand people, preferably, doing stuff when someone speaks out about it and makes, and like, you know, Ann Coulter, right? All of a sudden, it terrorizes the rest of them. And they want to speak out a little braver. You got, you got to... You gotta train these puppets, and that's what they are, they're puppets. And if they're losing, like I say, the most popular person out there in the media is the one who told the truth. That's the most viral video every week, is somebody in the media who told the truth. And what a sad and pathetic and humiliating society we really live in, that that's acceptable, and that nothing different changes about that, no matter how many times it happens. That the media tells the truth and the video goes viral, and uh, that media doesn't tell the truth again for at least six or seven months, right? Before they get another viral video because they told the truth. Whether it's the truth or not is a whole different story. But is that, it's, it was that uh, illusion and everybody's like, my goodness, it's unbelievable. Look, you gotta watch it, Dana. You gotta watch it. They told the truth. It's up everywhere and everybody's blogging. <laughs> media told the truth. And they're in the comment section. Yeah, it's about time, man. About time, man. That's pretty cool, man. That's pretty cool. And I've seen that so much over the years. To the point where, uh, it, you know, I, I'm not going to say it doesn't shock me anymore, but it still shocks me. But I've become numb, and it just struck me a couple of days ago how ironic and how useful it is to, to keep pummeling them with that point. And if they could make it through the first 15 minutes of video, they might have learned something tonight because it was pretty goofy. I'll come over to the comment section, then I'll come back over to E&E &E News, and then it'll be time to wind down. And E&E &E News got a couple of really big headlines there. Somebody hurt Tepco's feelings. I'm, I'm at it all the time. I'm trying. I'm working hard. <laughs> you have no idea. How I would like to be the person who could sit there and say, yeah, I stuck it to him. I really did. I stuck it to him. I made him cry. <laughs> I made Tevco cry. That's what I want him to be known as. I swear. I never ask for another thing ever again. If Tevco will put a video and say, Tevco made me cry. <laughs> I'd give it all up right now. Take my channel down. I would. Probably not that one, because I like my music, but... <sighs> but I want to be the guy that hurts Tep Ghost's feelings. I want to get a video of it, and I want to share it with you folks. <laughs> so I can drool with our... Because we done it together. I don't do nothing by myself. I knows. I read the comments after. I sees everything. In the comment section. And that's another thing I should talk to everybody about. Is that the comment section likes to go spam. On people. And I can't unspam them. And I can't comment it back to you. If it gets down very far. It's like bizarre land. I, you know Google has destroyed the, all forms of communication. It's just amazing you're able to get away with what you're doing tonight. That shocks me. That's why I read it every night. Because that probably won't last that long. <laughs> so I'll take... I'm used to seeing trends like that in my life. And so I'll take advantage of it and read everything I see all the time. Because you don't know what's, you know, what's going to click, what's going to resonate. And you can really get the mood of, what's, of what you missed. Because sometimes I can sit here and go right to the end, right? And I have to read the comments to find out what happened, how many people, <laughs> how many people were like, Dana's lost it again. Uh, yeah. Tepco. Tepco's like a little brother we all wanted. You know, the little brother you can all just 
get there, you can get on, get on down, really give it to them all the time. Hey, little brother! Hey, that's the little brother we all wanted. Well, that's not the whole thing, but. So the body will come up, there'll be arms swinging here. You can see he's got pretty toes. And he's designed to sit on my lap like that. You can see he'll be sitting really good on my lap. Right? Right? Oh, yeah, I knocked his wig off. Did you know Ted Cole wore a wig? Ha, ha, ha. That's another scoop for the beautiful girl by Dana Channel. And crew tonight, we got a scoop that Tedco wears wigs. I proved it. It's on video. Nobody can deny that. Nobody can debunk it. You've seen it. i seen it. And anybody who watches this after is going to go... <whistles> Rock him, sock him, Dana. You funny lost it. So... Did I miss something? 40, 40 minutes. Okay. I screwed up every chance I tried. Uh, Nuber Magic was here. Uh, Miss Milky was here. Missing Sky was here. There's links below to their videos. Dwayne Campbell uh, or Lisa, I'm not sure. We got Logan Anderson. Yeah, they can't get across the Pacific, the animals, you know. Let me keep going because I'll digress real fast. Hi, hi Baz Mac. Uh, Sherlock Penny Miller looks at the comments stop. Checks and balances. Broken ass honor. David Motter. I uh, did my comments stop over here too. I wonder what it's like. Looks like. Oh, my screen is freezing. Let me come down. No, it's all good. 41 41. Not sure what's going on there, folks. We got to take the opportunity that we got, the one chance in history that we have to clear and that they still haven't got the total wrap put up on us. This first time in humanity that we've been you know, free enough to sit here and do what we're doing. If we were in China, we wouldn't be getting away with this. We're in... The, Japan, we might be facing 10 years in uh, concentration camps. They still got to debate it. It's still not a lie yet, but they passed they pass it in the lot, but now it got to go through the challenges and everything else. But soon you won't be able to do something like that. Right now you could definitely get a, a lot of trouble for doing what we're doing. Five billion people on this planet have no idea that a massive amount of buckyballs and radiation, really bad radiation, you hear cesium, that's code word for uranium. When you hear strontium, it's code word for plutonium. When you hear iodine-131, it's code word for one iodine-129. And iodine-132, which uh, you uptake nine times better to tax your thyroid nine times more effectively. And when you hear the words half-life, you multiply it by ten. That's the rule of thumb. So if you're trying to read uh, headlines and you're trying to work out what that actually means, it actually means times 10. Because it turns into another radioisotope, turns into another radioisotope with other half-lives of radioisotopes and radioisotopes. Uh, and all along the way, it's released an enormous, inconceivable amount of harm, and harmful genetically altering, DNA altering, sperm altering, cancer growing, particulates and particles and gammas and betas and alphas and in particular the buckyballs that are created by and there's links below to that are created by spraying salt water on the melted cores and so the headline at E&E &E News today I got a feeling something wrong with my with my comment section because I'm not getting a single comment I'll refresh the page but both of my comments uh, have stopped just refresh that see what happens here no I have to go and see if I'm still streaming I guess because seems odd to me hang on folks oh there we go we're back to normal yeah so I lost all the comments I thought you guys all disappeared and I was like oh great it's like my video oh, anyway, where I started off with no audio I'm going to refresh this one so hang on See if it goes 
Tant mieux, hein, mais... Et là Doesn't know what it wants to do. Here we go. Well done. Sorry, folks. How much I can do about it. It's hard to do the live streams. It's harder. Uh, it's hard sometimes because you don't know if everything is working properly. When you see comments on both computers stop and not get any more, you wonder where you're still streaming. But I guess it was. And so let's go over and grab uh, some of those headlines as we wind down. Uh, yeah, half life of a human. Nuclear expert Fukushima reactor cores melted right down into the ground. Oh, what a great headline! That's fantastic. That that's actually being debated, and people are actually talking about it. That actually really truly made my day. Probably the best day I've had since this all started was seeing that headline today. That tonight, I mean, that truly, that truly made me feel. Thank goodness, you know. Now, now people out there got the headline to work with, and you'll see that chatter. That's so important. That's so vital. And you know, we're so grateful that E and E News doesn't miss a beat and does what they do. And uh, they, they're not picking sides, you know. They just tell the story, put it up there. They they pick a little bit of sides sometimes, but. They put at least they put it up there so you got both sides. You need both sides uh, of the debate in order to understand what the debate is about. You can't have a debate with only one side. And that's probably why people like this particular show is because I really do know both sides of the argument. You wouldn't say that tonight, I know, but I like to incorporate it uh, into everything because that's how I that's how I do my shows. It's based upon. I heard all these lies, and it drove me mad for hours. And so I can't get that out of my head till I get it out of my get it out of my mouth. And uh, BBC interview uh, new news about Fukushima keeps getting worse. Uh, that's a good article, and that's a good listen. And the other one, uh, the nuclear reactor cores are melted right down to the ground. He's a Canadian, and he missed quite a bit. Uh, he missed quite a bit, and he he's supposed to be, he's not, like, he listened to his uh, credentials. He's not an expert, um, but he plays the part where he goes into court and gives uh, dispositions in, uh, in the justice system, the legal system. He does, he is qualified uh, as a scientist, but he's not a nuclear physicist. And so he learned about it, and I'm surprised where he got a lot of stuff today that, that are pretty straightforward, in my opinion, anyway. But he got them way wrong. And so that worried me. I listened to everything, but I didn't listen to it twice, so I probably missed something. But that did, that did give me some concern. But there's some good stuff there. There always is, see? And um, I, just, I always wonder when I went, why? Because when it bugs me like that, there's a reason for it. And I, I'll be back listening to it two or three times. I'll find out what it is. I'll be a lot more articulate next time. But that was the headline I just read you. And so Gunderson, the visible steam at Unit 3 is from constant radioactive releases. And he downplays it and he marginalizes things all the time. But that's who everybody turns to, right? All the media just... You know, everybody wrote me, so here I am making another video. Seven years old, seventy. Been at this a long time, and he, been part and parcel, he uh, was involved in over seventy of the nuclear plants. There's what four hundred and forty. So he's been making money off seventy of them. Um, and we need people that are that are going to have some emotions. We need people that are are going to use. Uh, their influence, you know, to finally make the stand. It's no good to go half-hearted. At least not for me, anyway. I'm in it all the way. It's no good to go half-hearted into this. Because you, you only, if you're doing that, is you don't understand it, and you're just you're you can create a lot of issues by doing that. You got to go into the foot. You know, that's what you listen to all day. That's what you dream about all night. It's what you look at in the morning as soon as you wake up and every chance you get 
all day, every day, and you listen to every lecture, no matter how much you hate it or how much you disagree with it, you go back and listen to it again. You never turn your back on anything. You go listen to it and find out why that bugged you and you rationalize it, and you will. And as you go down that hole, you find they're all lying to you. Every one of the people that they're supposed to be able to trust are, are well so knowledgeable that when they relate things um, and they don't link up, that's not an accident. That's not an accident, see? And so they're doing that on purpose for their pensions and for their paychecks. And it's despicable. And we can end that by holding to account, by calling them out. I mean, that's... Um, that's exactly what you've got to do, is you've got to call them out, you've got to hold them accountable. And you can do that by saying, hey, you got that wrong, you can't use the words potatoes or rocks or walking as background radiation when you're talking about uh, uranium and plutonium, because people might think you're foolish, and I like you, and you're a nice person, I don't want you to see you make a dick of yourself. That's what you say, you know, no, you don't have to say that, but you know what I'm saying? You, you put it out there like you're trying to help them, like you're, trying to, like you're a fan. You can just make it up, like you're a fan. And you just don't want them, you know, the other fans to know that you're stupid. And so you here's a cute little video to help you correct, 15 or 20 seconds. But And people will do this in the future. Thousands, millions will start doing that. But that'll be because of rage. And it won't be only 15 seconds. <laughs> it'll be, you know, it'll be like screaming fits. I've already seen it in this town. Uh, multimillionaires who invested all the money and asked me uh, for details... And they were so mad, they were so upset, because it matched up to everything they looked at. And uh, they were surprisingly informed, but they were enraged, because I, I guess because I was, uh, I was linking it up for them, as they say it. And so it was obviously done. But what I'm saying is, that's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking to realize that, you know, they they had to struggle just to get the basics so hard because the media kept lying to them. The media keep kept using these bananas, these fabrications, these outright outrageous, that if you were on the medical board and these same physicians and doctors and everything were sat in front of you and say that, you, you would have to take the licenses away if you had the moral or the ethics necessary. And we don't see that anymore in society or in the oversights or the checks and balances. We just don't see the moral and ethics. We see strictly illusion and we see everybody appointed by the administrations. Just like the TSA got their badges through administration, not through legislation. That's what they have to call the police. They can't arrest you. They got no power. They got their job because they went and bought a pizza or a coffee and they seen one a TSA on the side of them. That's a fact. They're not entitled to law enforcement benefits or law, law enforcement pensions or law enforcement health care. They're not law enforcement. They got their badges through administration. Right? So there's this illusion we live in where the PR people and the lobbyists are up onto your mainstream media who only read, a, you know, and I know it went on and on and I'll give it up, but that illusion doesn't work no more. Just like that banana will never work against you folks again, ever. Nobody could ever watch this video, poor souls, and consider that a banana is equivalent to any kind of radiation and quite the opposite to the point where it'll, you'll be absurdly saying that, you know, come on, I can't watch this clown talking about a banana as background radiation when we're talking about nuclear radiation. It has zero. It, it, it should never be mentioned in the same sentence. And it's only done that way in order to trick people and keep that well-enforced lie alive, right? To trigger those memories you don't remember about all that indoctrination through all the movies and all the mediums and all the pundits that has subconsciously is controlling you and has you in a hypnotic state where you can't hear the words. So that's why I have to sit here for an hour and say a banana, Mr. Tepco. That's all because of people with Tepco's. Oh, I'm sorry, because of banana. Here's your mug too. He lost his wig from cancer. Right, this is Mr. Uh, radiation Dickhead. Ooh. And he's gonna go out with a bang here in a few minutes. And so when I finish him, he'll be a lot bigger. He'll have arms. He'll have arms. As you can see, it was all about, can I get him to fit on my lap? You know? That's Mr. Tepco's head. 
Anybody want me to give Tepco a shot in the head? Oh, I just knocked his eye off. <laughs> Took his eye out with one bloody punch from the beautiful girl by Dana Guy. Who lost his bloody mind on January the 2nd, 2014. At 8.55. So I still got five minutes left. Ooh. Give me your money, Mr. Tepco. You got any money? You better give it up now. Come over here, buddy. I don't want it. That's the best thing about it. No, help! Dana, don't hit me! Oh, wow! Wow! No good begging, Mr. Tepco. No good begging, Mr. Tepco. Yeah, he'll be pretty good when I get the old banana on his head. No, Dana, don't help me! Wow! Yeah, well, there you go. I'll come over to the chat room, say hi to people, and I'll pop his head in a second here. And we'll call it a night. And I have to put a notation down below the video after that uh, there's a lot of weird noises. And I'm being pretty foolish. And I just thought it would be okay to come out and have a few... Sh get, get, talk to all those PR firms down in America. Oh. Talk to all those... PR bootlicking cheerleading lap dogs in the universities. Ooh. I don't have to stab this boy. It's hurting me. I can't. And I'm talking to all of those PR firms down in Tokyo. Give it up. I'm not going to tell you again. Sorry, folks. I popped him good. <laughs> That is so good. I mean, that's that's like having, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but that's such a great release for me anyway. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like it. I know. I'll get in trouble for that. I'm going to send you hate mail to Dana at blowave.com. Lisa Unger, pop it, pop it. I'm Michael C. Hi, Logan. We'll see you folks tomorrow night. Anna Beck, Baz, Stormy Cloud, hi. Sergeant, hey bud. Uh, we got Mark. Hi, Mark. Yeah, I got one for you, buddy. I seen you out there with your uh, Tipco sign in your videos. I watched them all. I left a comment for you too, by the way. Uh, that's cool. Uh, let me see. We got Moments Not Anymore, Aviator, Nuber Magic, Miss Milky the Clown is out there, Logan, James, 42. Thanks, folks. Yeah, Anna Beck. <laughs> Want to be live? Aqua 123, Zipfree, Sylvia. We got Albert, Mickey. Make is looking. Castle Moms. No answers again. I don't know Castle Moms. Aaron Riggs, Dwayne Campbell. Nah, tonight was not really about answering. Tonight was about. I done some, but never more. Lonnie Clark. Hi, Lonnie. Donna Bell again. Checks and balances. Elizabeth and Camshaft, Stacy Lane. I seen you there earlier. <laughs> you guys are going at it. That's pretty fun. You're welcome, folks. Lunar, Loose Goose, Kane Musgrave. Thank you, Sydney. That was a good bit of fun, folks. I'm glad everybody had a, a bit of an easier night. I should have that little Tepco new one ready for tomorrow night. You'll have arms anyway. I'll get them at least that far and shoulders. Sporty Diver. We got uh, Alex, Ketcher K, uh, my goodness, Verzalo, Alki K, I can't get it. Has anyone done a radiation reading recently? No. Nope. Castle Mom, I missed a thumbs down, might be because of the balloon thing. Many of us are here for serious info and solutions. Well, I'm sorry, but this is my stream, and I'll do what I want. And I can't, I can't be here doom and glooming every night. Okay? I just can't do that. And so you want to give me a thumb down because I'm having a bit of fun. Then you're not using your head. 11, the brand 11, thank you. Hi, Great Bay 1961. Hi, Pauline. Yeah, good night, everybody. Dwayne, Lisa, Sylvia, Annabeck. Uh, once again, thank Nuber Magic for finding the time. And everybody, I'll make sure you go and catch his latest update. 
We thank Miss Milky for all the work she's done and has continued to do in people she inspired. We'll catch you folks tomorrow night. We're going to pop another balloon. Because that's how I roll. Take care, folks. <laughs>